In the holy name of Jesus, the evangelization sale of the Sisters of St. Anne of Luzon, Bangalore Province presents this video on St. Margaret of Castello. Ashamed of Margaret who was born blind and with other physical deformities, her parents of noble ancestry abandoned her. But God was gracious to her and she had supernatural spiritual experiences. She became a lay Dominican. In spite of her physical limitations, she carried out works of mercy. She died on April 13, 1320 at the age of 33. Her incorrupt body is in the church of St. Dominic in Città di Castello, Italy. She is patroness of the unborn, the ugly, the blind, the disabled, the unwanted and abandoned, and pro-life movements. Margaret of Castello was born to Parisio and Emilia, a wealthy couple, in 1287 in a castle on top of a steep mountain in Metola, present-day central Italy. Margaret's father was the governor of the military garrison at Metola. He was a wealthy man who inherited and ruled over the vast forest beneath his Metola castle. Her father had planned a large celebration for the birth of a son. Instead, the firstborn was a baby girl. She was born blind and deformed, with a severe curvature of the spine and one leg much shorter than the other. Her parents were ashamed of her. Their pride was hurt. They decided to hide her forever. So her mother's maid was given complete charge and instructed to keep the child in a secluded section of the family castle away from her parents and visitors in the hopes that her existence would be kept secret. They didn't even bother to baptize her. The kind maid chose the name Margaret for the little child because it meant Pearl and got her baptized in Mercatello. She taught to Margaret the basic Christian faith and the basic prayers. At the age of six, Margaret was accidentally seen by a guest at her parents' castle. Afraid that Margaret would eventually be revealed to the public, her parents decided to place her to a more secluded place. A small cell was built next to their chapel in the forest. The cell had large uneven stones for a floor and one small window. Little Margaret was put in the cell without any explanation and she endured terrible loneliness. Margaret had no idea that she was different from other children, no idea of her handicaps. She lived as a prisoner in that stone room for about 10 years. Surviving for all those years in that stone prison room through bitter cold winters and stifling hot summers is unimaginable. The priest chaplain at the castle became her close friend and teacher and provided the sacraments. He talked to her daily about God's love and his special reason for creating us. He was amazed at her docility and the depth of her spiritual wisdom. She was unusually brilliant. She easily memorized the Psalms and other Bible verses. The seeds that the maid planted were watered by the priest chaplain. Margaret made sure these seeds of faith planted and watered were taken care by her. She learned to embrace her Lord in solitude. When Margaret turned 16, they heard about miracles taking place in Città di Castello at the tomb of a well-known Franciscan Third Order member, Fra Giacomo, inside the church of St. Francisco. So in the year 1303, under cover of darkness, 
her parents took her to Sita de Castelo in hope of a cure for her birth defects. They left Margaret among others seeking cures at the tomb inside the church and instructed her to pray hard. Margaret prayed, but she added with her whole heart that she wanted only what God willed for her, whatever that might be. When her parents returned later that day, they found nothing happened in Margaret. So without saying a word, they carelessly abandoned her there and left for home never to see her again. Margaret remained praying until the church was locked that night. She spent the entire night outside on the church steps waiting for her parents and worrying about them. She wandered the streets without money or friends in a strange city. Later Margaret came to know that her parents abandoned her. She was heartbroken. Homeless beggars taught her to beg. She begged for her daily sustenance, something she never did before. When Margaret had lived as a beggar for about a year or more, her radiant cheerfulness and faith in God's love despite her personal circumstances drew attention and led the other beggars to view their lives differently margaret was open to god's grace and friendship she viewed her disabilities as gifts from god the people of castello never heard her cursing her parents for abandoning her her faith was uncompromising Despite her suffering, Margaret remained serene, calm, cheerful and courageous. She forgave her parents for their ill treatment of her. Instead of becoming bitter, she became sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. The poor people of the town took her in as one of their own and she was passed on to several poor families who helped prisoners. and other poor people she became practically the adopted child of the village they declared that far from being a burden little margaret brought a blessing upon those who befriended her in her desire to show her gratitude to the people of sita de castello she looked after the children while their parents were at work She taught them about God's love and taught them to sing psalms which in spite of her blindness she had learned by heart. Later she became a lay dominican dedicating the rest of her short life to works of spiritual and corporal mercy and was clothed in the habit of Saint Dominic. Margaret never allowed her disabilities or sufferings to define her. or stop her from serving others her difficulties made her sensitive compassionate and understanding towards others in spite of her physical difficulties she visited prisoners helped the sick and comforted people who were suffering her heroic self sacrifice was like a benediction to the whole city Margaret then lived with an affluent family named Venturino and remained with them till her death in 1320. There she spent time in contemplation when she was not engaged in active apostolate in the town. Though she was not educated and completely blind, she taught their sons in logic, astronomy, Latin grammar and music. Messer Venturino and his whole household believed that Margaret was a blessing for them. She attended holy mass daily, sometimes two or three masses a day. Often she stayed for hours before the Eucharistic lord. As a reward for her love, God permitted her to see with eyes of the spirit the incarnate son of God daily on the altar. from the consecration to the communion of the mass 
Margaret was very generous in her prayers for those who asked for help. We are told that when at prayer, she was frequently raised a foot or more from the ground, remaining thus for a long time. One day, Margaret visited a prisoner named Alonzo. He was tortured for a crime that he had not committed. Soon his wife and young son became destitute and his son died of starvation. So he fell into despair and blasphemed against God and went into uncontrollable rages. While St. Margaret was praying in his cell, she fell into an ecstasy, her face surrounded by a brilliant light. She levitated from the ground almost two feet into the air. This phenomenon greatly affected him. He repented for his resentment and many blasphemies against God. Once, when Messo Venturino and the children were away, a raging fire started on the ground floor of the house. Despite the brigade of firefighters that was formed, the fire was getting completely out of control. Lady Grigia called out frantically to Margaret to hurry out. Calmly, Margaret called down to Lady Grigia, telling her not to be afraid, but to trust in God, and threw her mandalate cloak into the flames. As she did so, the raging fire was instantly extinguished. Throughout her life, God had worked a number of miracles of different kinds. Margaret's soul flew to her beloved Creator to be with Him forever on 13 April 1320 at the age of 33. Thousands of people came to her funeral praising her goodness and holiness. They demanded that she be buried within the church itself against the resistance of the parish priest. On the day of her funeral, a child who was mute and crippled since birth was brought by her parents and placed on the ground next to Margaret's body. All joined the tearfully beseeching parents in their appeal for a cure. In the sight of all, Margaret's left arm was rising and reaching over to touch the little crippled child beside her. As it did, the little girl immediately stood up and called out in a loud voice, I have been cured through Margaret. Witnesses signed documents testifying to the cure of the two ailments of the child. After that miracle, she was buried in a tomb inside the church where over 200 remarkable miracles took place. After 238 years, on June 9, 1558, her tomb was opened and her body was found incorrupt. Even her left arm, which had lifted to cure the little crippled mute child, was still slightly raised without any support. Margaret's little uncorrupted body lies peacefully in a glass coffin under the main altar of St. Dominic Church in Città di Castello, Italy. Margaret was beatified on 19th October 1609 and canonized on 24th April 2021 by Pope Francis. If ultrasound had existed in the 13th century, her parents might have decided to abort her and the church would have lost such a sweet saint. Margaret's parents had only worldly eyes and got rid of her. God treasures and uses what the world throws away. The eyes of heaven saw what was within this precious little deformed child who was more whole and beautiful to heaven than most people who walk the earth. In Isaiah 49.15 God says, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should have no compassion on the child of her own? Even these may forget, yet 
I will not forget you. In verse 16 he says, Behold, I have carved you on the palms of my hands. According to Romans 8.28, we know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. God turned everything into good in the life of St. Margaret of Castello. Prayer God our Father, we praise and thank you for the gifts of our families, good health, strength, intelligence, talents and opportunities. We lift up to you, your children who are physically and mentally challenged, unwanted and abandoned or destitute. Let them find in you all they have lost in this world. Let your embracing hands be their security and comfort. Bless the parents to take care of your gifts, their children, with love, responsibility and accountability. Amen. St. Margaret of Castello, pray for us. Glory to God in the highest 